Hey everyone, Graham here from TheRecordingRevolution.com. Have a product review for you today. We are looking at the 11 Rack from Avid, which is a total guitar amp effects solution um, for studio and stage. It's totally awesome. It's been out for a few years now and I have no idea why I haven't got my hands on one until recently. Um, but this is one of the few products that I've totally been stoked about and it's changing a lot of the way I work. So I really wanted to review it for you today, show it to you, and then sort of give you an idea of what can be done with it. Um, I'm going to go over sort of the feature set because I think it's more than people think it is. Um, and then I'm going to also show you what it sounds like. So we'll play a little bit of guitar and sort of show you how I can build some sounds with it. Um, on the offset, it's a 2U rack space um, for your studio or for stage and it has DSP on the box that emulates guitar amps, guitar cabinets and speaker emulations, uh, pedal board effects, time-based effects, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of products do this, either software products um, or some competitor standalone products. But one thing that is totally cool about the 11 rack that you really you have to just plug it in and play to experience is what they call True Z. It's their um, impedance matching uh, emulation. So you normally in any kind of guitar related box you plug in the guitar through a high Z, a high impedance um, input and it's good for guitar level signals. They call this True Z and what they're doing, the DSP behind the jack, it automatically adjusts the impedance of your guitar um, or the DSP behind the, the amp, adjust the impedance of that to match what your guitar would sound like through whatever amp you're playing. Because every amp, it feels different, right? Uh, it feels different to play a Marshall through a Marshall than it does to play through, say, um, a Fender, like a Bassman, or even a Vox, or, um, you know, a, a Mesa Boogie. I mean, all of these, they have different electronic components, so it's not just the sound of the amp, and it's not just the the sound of the speaker, it's also the sound of the impedance and the actual one that matches your pickups, your guitar, and it does this change automatically behind it. And it's like, it's too technical for me to really care about, but what you get is you feel like you're playing through a Marshall and you get that response that you're used to when you play through an amp, which is usually what's missing. There's plenty of software that can make a good enough sounding amp model or emulation, but does it feel like you're playing the amp when you play it? Because those slight nuances affect the way you play. If you're a guitar player, you know that. It's probably why you prefer to play through an amp and mic it up, because it feels and sounds right. The 11 rack, kind of it kind of does that. It kind of feels and sounds right, which is super, super awesome. Um, so that's one of the big pluses of this thing in general in terms of feel. On the front, you've got all the standard controls. The main display shows you a lot of settings. But what I love about it, it's really easy to navigate. So you've got the, a couple different views. You've got the amp setting as if you're looking at the top or front of your amp. You know, in this case, on this setting, you know, you've got volume, treble, mid, bass. You're going to have all those kinds of controls that you can adjust with the knobs. Just turn them and go for it like you would an amp. Um, but then if you click the edit button, you can flip through and basically see your whole signal chain. Okay, so out of the box, these are rigs. They call them rigs, and it's a preset of a certain amp, a certain speaker, and a certain chain of pedal board stuff, right? So you can adjust the amp, right? So right now, you're on this one amp. You can totally adjust whatever amp you want, adjust the amp models, and that's going to totally adjust your sound like crazy, right? Um, you can adjust the cabinet, so you, you can pick an amp that you like, but then you can totally adjust the cabinet of what you want. Do you want, you know, 410? Do you want a standard 212 or something? Or a small 112? Or do you want a 412 cabinet? Um, do you want an open back? That kind of stuff. You've got the different cabinets that totally change, as you know, the sound of your amp, right? They produce the sound differently. So you've got the amp changing, the cabinet changing, um, and then on top of that, you've got the microphone on the cabinet. So when you're on the amps or the cab setting, you can totally change what microphone emulation is picking up the speaker. So that these are all components that you would have in the studio um, is match the right amp that you want for your tone, the right cabinet for the tone, and then what mic you throw in front of it changes the tone. So you've got everything from condensers to dynamics to 
um, even ribbon microphones, right? And so you can kind of get what they are. They've got SM57s and SM7s, and they've got uh, Sennheiser 421s, and they have, you know, U87s, U67s from Neumann. Um, so you've got, uh, even have a ribbon microphone, you've got a Royer. So you've got all these choices to totally change the sort of response, the way you're picking up the guitar tone. So those three things at their core, you can make almost any guitar sound you want and they sound real and they feel real. So you can totally dial in the amp and the amp tone that you want, then swap out different cabinets till you find one that really gives you the feel you want and then swap out the microphone to see what picks up. Is it too bright? Pick a more mid-rangey type microphone. Is it too beefy? Thin it out with a different style microphone. It totally changed what you hear. Total different tones. You go on through the list and you've got all the different pedals, right? You have delays, you have a couple of different effects like compressors, EQs, you've got a reverb um, and you can have distortion as well. So this is where you can choose what pedals go in your pedal board, right? And they've emulated everything from uh, Tube Screamer, an 808 original Tube Screamer, um, sort of a rat distortion. Um, they've got different delays, they've got reverb, some that they've created their own Avid ones and some that they're modeling. Uh, from famous boxes and stomp boxes that we all love. So you can, on top of the amp settings, adjust what pedals you have and then what pedals, tones you have on those pedals, right? So all of that is configurable with the display and the knobs change, they light up based off of what parameters you have. If there's only one thing you can adjust, only one knob's gonna light up. If you can adjust four or five things, only four are gonna light up. It's pretty easy to see what you're doing when you get into um, an effect, right? You click on the actual effect and you can dial through the um, different features of that stomp box. So you can arrow over to your delay, arrow over to your distortion and tweak the sound of that and listen to it in real time. Just like reaching down to your pedal board and tweaking a knob. It's that simple. Reach down with a button and grab a knob and go. And I love, love, love that, how simple it is. To the right of the whole display is sort of like simple on off switches for your effects which is cool, so you can dial in the tone you want, and then to the right, you've just got your distortion button on or off. You've got your modulation button on or off, you know, if you've got a tremolo effect or something. Your delay on and off, your reverb on and off, and then your effects on and off if you're using like a wah or something else. So at a glance, once you've got a rig set up and you know it, you're familiar with it, you can just t take your stomp boxes on or off right there with a the switch. Now, of course, everything can also be controlled from your feet, and I'll show you that on the back, and you can have uh, momentary foot switches with latch kind of capabilities to control these on and off. You can also use, use MIDI to control just about everything on the board. Um, but it's all here on the front panel for you if you're in the studio, just plug it in and going for it. And on the far right, you have your inputs, okay? On the bottom, I wanna show you it's the guitar input, the true Z, that's where you plug in your guitar. That's where you get to going, okay? Um, you've got an output to amp, so on the output of this, box, you're going to go to a lot of different options. That's going to have all the sounds, but you can also run like a through right out of sort of the head. Treat this like a guitar head and you can run out of this to an actual speaker or an amp. Um, so either to do a direct out, so it's like a, a mimic, so you can have the recording maybe of this, but also you can send this to an amp and feed an amp with just the clean signal. You can do both, or you can also just run this as a head to a speaker cabinet that you have on stage, which is super cool. Headphone output, which is perfect for just referencing or jamming along. You don't have to have this plugged into any software, just turn it on and plug in headphones and play. That's a completely standalone unit. And then up top, you've also got a mic pre, because this is also um, an audio interface. It's a USB 2.0 interface for Pro Tools or almost any DAW. So plug in an XLR microphone, fan of power on or off, you got a pad, on or off, and then you've got your gain adjust for the preamp. So it has a preamp built in, which is super cool. So if you're a singer-songwriter that does guitar and vocals, this could be your box. You could have this as your interface, and it's also all your guitar amp stuff for electric and bass, um, and it's also microphone for acoustic guitar, vocals, micing up a drum kit, whatever you want. So this could be your entire unit on the front. Let's take a look at the back. All right, so on the back, you've got your typical connections that you'd hope to see. Your main output, that's the output that comes after all of your effects. So that's pretty much what you're gonna use. So for me, I use, I just do this in mono. Now you could totally make this in stereo because all the effects are stereo. Um, 
so you could record in stereo or run live in stereo. But I don't like to do stereo guitars anywhere, live or in the studio. So I always do mono, so I just come out of the line output here on the left, which is gonna have all my amp, uh, speaker emulation, distortions, uh, microphone, everything that I've done in the 11 rack comes out one cable there. I run that line input into my converters or my audio interface in the studio, and you're good to go. Um, you've got a ground lift switch. If you're having hum problems, you can kill that. Um, you also have line inputs. If you want to run something else through this, perhaps a keyboard, why not, right? You also have that second output to amp, so you can run stereo um, or to two different amps. You have an effects loop, just like you would on a guitar amp, so you can run effects like actual outboard effects. You can incorporate them into the 11 rack, which is super cool. You return. You've got digital I.O., so you've got AES in and out. You've got SPDIF in and out, so you could run the SPDIF to your audio interface as well. You don't have to do analog line out. This could totally can be your converter as well. It goes in digital, stays digital, comes out digital, goes right into your converter digital, so you could do SPDIF as well. Uh, at the bottom, you've got your MIDI, right? MIDI I.O., so you can get a total MIDI controller footboard um, and have access to all the different buttons run cable into that so when you do this live or if you use the 11 rack live you can totally control all the parameters so you can switch through patches you can turn the tuner on and off things like that um, expression pedal that's where you plug in um, just like simple one or two button um, expression pedal to just turn on a couple of settings so in live you can do this with turn on your tuner and engage my overdrive pedal or something like that or switch to a di completely different preset rig with one button and then engage your tuner with the other button whatever you want to do and then there's your USB out 2.0 and then obviously power now what I want to do is plug in my guitar and play a little bit so you can hear what it sounds like for one and then you can also get a feel for how you can start with a patch or how you can start from scratch and just build your own sound and get a feel for some of the different possibilities and get, you probably will get hooked because once you start tweaking, you realize that there's enough possibilities that it's fun, but not too many that you get overwhelmed and you just get really good tone really, really quickly. So let's take a look. All right, so when you boot up your 11 rack, whether it's in the studio or live or wherever, you're gonna have some default rig that you're set on. And you can scroll through these rigs, right? And these are kind of the different, complete different sound changes. <laughs> Right, so you could just flip through, you know, there's like a hundred different patches already custom built, and then you can have a hundred different user presets, so you can tweak it to yourself. So let's start with this. Um, on this setting, it's the Crunchy 50, and what we're looking at is a plexiglass 50 watt, so it's a Marshall um, Plexi 50 watt head at least. And if I wanted to, I could just dial in, you know, presence, the, the tone, treble, mid, bass, whatever, on the channel. But let's dig into it and see what it's made of. You hit the edit button, and now we're looking at the components. Um, and I'm going to scroll over to uh, the actual amp. Okay, and right now we're looking at amp model, plexiglass 50 watt, and that's pretty cool. Let's leave it on that, but let's change the cab. So right now we're on a 412 greenback. Let's change it to a 212. Here how the tone totally changes from the cab. Let's grab something like, um, sorry, let's grab. Just here's a single 15. So you totally get different response just from the cab. Let's go back to, here's a 410 tweed bass, right? <laughs> Thinner sounding, right? We're still using the Plexi, the Marshall, 
50 watt head, we just changed the cabinet. Let's say we <laughs> stuck with that 410. I don't know why you'd play Marshall through 410s, but why not? The microphone we've got is a, is a dynamic microphone. It's a 409. Let's change it to a 57, SM57. A little punchier, right? We could even choose an SM7, which is a beefier dynamic. Or we could choose, um, let's say, a U67 con condenser microphone. A little brighter. Here's a U87. Right? More fizzy. It's got that fizzy top end. So, again, you might not want a condenser on your cab. Um, you can try a ribbon even. A little darker, right, than the condenser, just like a Royer 121 would be on a cab. So we've had the same amp, but we've come a long way. Again, if that's sounding too thin to you, let's go back and change the cab. Let's do 212 AC Blue. So this is, I think, the Vox, or at least one of the Vox speaker cabins. Now that ribbon is sounding too dark, so let's just dial it back to classic 57. You get the idea in terms of just even changing the cabinets and the microphones. It's one of the things I love a lot. Um, the cool thing about it is you can start with one head and just tweak, tweak, tweak that head away. I haven't even dialed in different EQ on the head. Right now I've got a delay. Oh, let's see. Let's go back to scrolling through. Looks like I've got um, a compressor, a delay, and reverb, the Avid reverb. I can turn those off. So it's just dry now. <laughs> Right? Now let's go back. Let's just go back to the amp. Let's just change to a different amp. That's still been that Marshall plexiglass. It's more of an aggressive modern. <laughs> Tread plate M. This is probably a Mesa. Um, let's go now to the cab. Let's see what cab we have. A 212. Now I'm not going to play a Mesa through a 212, right? Let's go through a 412. <laughs> Right? And then if you wanted a little bit beefier, Mike, put that SM7. Or the uh, Sennheiser 421. You can even control if it's on or off access. Let's go off access for a little darker. Too dark, you can grab a condenser. So right now we've got um, 
uh, Meza through a 412, mic'd up with an U87 condenser off access. It's not right on the cone. And you see the possibilities with just those combinations of just changing out the core components. You can go to totally clean stuff. We've got fenders in here. You can totally, totally change it up. And that has nothing to even to do with the effects. You could pick a different distortion. You could pick a different reverb. You could dial in exactly what you want. And it's that simple. You just start grabbing knobs and tweaking and then save it if you like. Couldn't be easier. All right, so that's the 11 rack from Avid. A totally awesome box. I'm using this in the studio now, playing around, writing, recording stuff. Um, because it sounds awesome and it's super easy to use and it's permanently in my rack um, and it's great when my kids are napping and I can't be loud and can't crank up my, my box um, to super high levels. So totally practical and it sounds legit and all the DSP is on the box so it's not taking any computer resources. You run through and then track into whatever DAW you want and it's beautiful. Um, the awesome thing if you're a Pro Tools user is you can totally control all of this from Pro Tools. So if you use the USB either for it as the interface or even if you're not using this as your interface but you hook it up with the USB cable, Pro Tools will recognize that the box is connected and then a window pops up and you can control all the settings. You can change your amps and you can see the amps. You know, you can change your speaker cabinets and see the change. Choose a different microphone. Look at your pedals. Dial in the sounds there. So if you're in the studio in Pro Tools, um, you may just want to plug in and then look at the screen and just dial in all your settings there and you can save settings for your 11 rack to that session. So when you open up that session, your 11 rack settings will change back to where they are. It's super flexible for Pro Tools integration, which is obviously what it was originally built for. But even if you don't use Pro Tools, again, the box is, is the complete like, guitar solution for any DAW. And then also for stage, like I literally bought another one of these to use on stage. So when I play guitar for our worship band, um, instead of micing up an amp, I'm starting to use this live. So put it in a, in a rack, throw it on stage, plug it in, have a simple foot switch, and I've got my amp, my cabinet. Um, it's got it's mic'd up the way I want with the microphone I want, and I can just literally run it out to the snake and run it to the PA. So I don't have to use any stage noise. I don't have to deal with any cables. I can just run my guitar into this, this to the PA, and you got your total guitar sound. So it's it's awesome for live. It's It just feels right, and there's no delay, and the DSP is happening in real time. So it just feels like you're playing an amp. So I'm usually not a big fan, again, of guitar amp emulating software for your main total sound. Um, the 11 rack is kind of proving me wrong. And right now, this thing is a total steal. It's $699 US uh, at the time of me taping this. 700 bucks, which is the price of a decent combo tube amp. And you get a ton of amps, including bass amps, and cabinets, and microphones, and effects, so your whole pedal board's taken care of. And it's an audio interface if you want to use it like that. So it doubles as your interface. So if you don't have an interface, it's not only all your guitar stuff, it's also an interface. You don't have to buy a USB interface. Um, but also, it comes with Pro Tools, right? So right now, Pro Tools 10 is out, Pro Tools 11 is almost in the door, it's coming. And if you buy Pro Tools 10 now, you get Pro Tools 11 for free. And if Pro Tools 11 is already out, then you're getting Pro Tools with this. And Pro Tools cost $6.99 brand new. So you buy this, you get Pro Tools free. Or think of it the other way, if you're thinking about buying Pro Tools for $6.99, buy this instead if you're a guitar player and you get Pro Tools as well. It's I don't even understand. It's like a ridiculous deal right now. So it's like a total no-brainer if Pro Tools is on the... Um, the radar for you, um, or if you just need an audio interface and a guitar solution. It's all of that bundled at a crazy price. So the guys at Avid, this is like the best deal they've got going right now. So snatch it up. I don't know how long this is going to last. It's been like this for a little while. $6.99, you get a full copy of Pro Tools people with the box, which is the same cost of Pro Tools. So 11 rack is totally ridiculously awesome. I only really review products that I think are awesome and priced right and really impact the home and project studio user and this is one of those boxes if you're a guitar player hope you enjoyed that everyone again this is grant from the recordingrevolution.com hope the review is helpful if you have any comments let me know on the website otherwise have a great day make some great music take care